so fucking cold. What is up, Potato Nation? You have seen my morning routine is pretty much the same every single day. I just get up, I drink a shitload of water, I head to the gym, and I get my workout. But one question I did get frequently asked last video was my pre-workout and what I was taking. So when it comes to pre-workout, I have three main ingredients. Beta-alanine, citrulline malate, and caffeine. All in their raw powder form, and I just take them to the dome! Now I usually try to stay on the low end of caffeine because you can build a tolerance. So my thought process is, take caffeine when you really need it. And today, it's cold, it's early, it's back day. So we going full potato with all of these today. <laughs> Get my quick pull day done. I don't think I'll record because my gym, A, doesn't like recording, and B, I only have like an hour to train because I have a shitload of work to do. So let's down these. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. That will give you a heart attack. That's more like it. <laughs> what the fuck is up with this scooper? We going big one on the citrulline malle today. Ow. And yeah, it does taste like shit, but it works. And beta alanine. Just a little scoop today. See you later. Right guys, so we are home, and I am thinking I'm just gonna make up some sort of a pre-workout, pre-workout? <laughs> Post-workout sandwich, a shitload of carbs, a good bit of protein, and slightly lower on the fat. So, firstly, we need some bread. Brown bread, because white bread gives you diabetes. I'm not serious. Some protein! If you watched any of my recipe videos, you know I eat a shitload of this. Easy protein. Some micronutrients. Also some tomatoes. And some sauce. Shiracha. And for more protein, we should have a protein bar. There it is. Jaffa cake, fulfill protein bar. And some more micros, pink lady, apple. And again, you know we don't eat off plates. We eat off chopping boards because our meals are so big. Here we go. In three, two, one. Mom is just coming through the door. I'm going to scare the shit out of her. Bye! What? <laughs> yes! Another one! Bring on the protein farts! <sighs> I swore I was supposed to be in for 11 o'clock today. Apparently, it's 10 o'clock. So, we're getting in some extra cardio. One eternity later. What is up, Potato Nation? We are back home. As you can see, we are cooking up a whopper, whopper bowl of oats. And I ain't playing when I say whopper. Take the magic juice. Bum! Yeah, buddy! And as today is Friday, that marks the universal day of Scott's Grocery Hall! Because, as you can see, though there may be plenty of frost... <laughs> and while you may have enough frosties at home, we have run out of the staple Cheerios. So you already know, we're stocking up. I have a serious question for you. How crunchy are your nuts? And of course, even more ice cream. And before I get some hippie down below saying that all I eat is junk food, check out this video and- Just don't say nothing, just look at the camera, you know? Fuck you! <laughs> we have Mama Murray in the building! <laughs> and she has brought home the only book I ever actually read. The Little Catalog. And as you can see, Little is coming in clutch to get you shredded! Mama Murray, is this- the key to six pack abs. I'll probably go for a refeed. What does a refeed do? I miss help. <laughs> and I can even confirm we have one in the building. Does it work? How'd you put it on? I, I don't know. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> so, following on from that clip, I thought I should just touch upon weight fluctuations because by now I think I am most famous for the size of my poop and how much my weight fluctuates. So I need to drill this into your mind guys. Your weight will fluctuate on a daily basis, okay? 
And, wait, why am I in the passenger seat? <laughs> and though the scale is a great tool to use, you should not let the daily fluctuations dictate your caloric intake for that day. And as much as you may not believe it, there are a lot of people out there who will see a spike in weight and then for that day say, okay, I need to drop calories, I need to do a little bit of cardio, but that is not the case, okay guys? There are so many variables that you need to take into account when you see that number before you start doing anything drastic. Things such as Burying your sodium or your salt intake. Sodium plays a key role in the regulation of water within the body. And this is maintained by having sodium balance. So ideally try and keep your sodium intake as consistent as possible. But the day will come where you might go to a restaurant and have some high salt food above your usual intake. And the end result may be a little bit of water retention because your body is in a state of shock. But you will soon find that if you hop back on your usual intake that you will usually flush out a bit of water afterwards because for something that has no caloric value it can't physically cause any fat gain. Next! Ugh. Stress. If you are extremely stressed you are going to cause an increase in cortisol and cortisol can then increase this hormone called aldosterone and aldosterone like sodium plays a key role in regulation of water so elevated aldosterone is usually correlated with increased water retention so the best thing to do is just stress less make sure you're getting enough sleep and you will soon find that you might then flush out a bit of water. Also how much you sweat and how much you drink on a daily basis can have a huge influence on that number. Don't even ask about the owls. The amount of bowel movements you have during the night. You have seen from my Instagram the amount of poop and piss that you excrete during the night plays a huge role in that number on the scale. For someone who eats 4,000 calories per day, much like me, whose poops are enormous, if I miss out on that poop, I will be half a kilo heavier. But it's not fat gain. And that brings me on to my next point, time of day. If you weigh in earlier and have more food in your stomach or forego a bowel movement, you're naturally gonna weigh in heavier, but it's not fat gain. And before you ask, yes, I'm walking down the road in the middle of the rain with a box of Cheerios talking to myself. Degree of carbohydrate intake. The more carbohydrates you have within your diet, the more you're gonna store as muscle glycogen. And for every gram of muscle glycogen that you store, you are likely to expect up to three to four grams of additional water retention. And seeing as our muscles can pretty much store 500 grams of carbs, oh my God, it's cold. You could expect to see like a zero to upwards of two kilo fluctuation on that scale. But once again, it's all water, intramuscular water. Finally. Being a female. As a female, you are a much more complex organism than us males. You have to deal with the menstrual cycle. And during the menstrual cycle, you're gonna have spikes and drops of follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, progesterone. These again, much like sodium, aldosterone, and cortisol, can all contribute to how much water a woman holds during the different stages of the menstrual cycle. But again, it's not fat gain if calories are in check. Once again, I've turned this into a semi-informative video. Really need to stop doing that. I want to provide you some value in the video. But the goal of that whole spiel was not to let that number on the scale dictate your caloric intake for that day. Weight fluctuations are normal and that fat gain requires chronic, 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 woo! Chronic overfeeding, not acute overfeeding. So track your weekly averages, compare those over time before you start doing anything too drastic. So that is the end of the video. If you liked the video, then like the video, hit that subscribe button. I'm still trying to get used to this whole vlogging thing, finding it very difficult not to include some informative content. So I might try and keep the next one a bit more raw, a bit more full potato mode. So I'll check in with you in the next vlog. Have a great day. See you later.